to implement calculations well, we need to first really understand evaluation contexts. So what do we mean by this word? So our context is the set of rows and columns that are present when an expression is evaluated. And we'll go into a lot of detail of what that means. But basically, if we have a calculation, say like sum or average, we're summing whatever is available at the moment. So if that sum is in a cell within an Excel spreadsheet, that cell is the intersection of some rows and columns. It's affected by filters and various other components. So we're going to talk about how that final context is determined and give some examples so we make sure we understand it before we move too deeply into calculations. Now our context is really built up from a couple of layers. The first of those is the row context. When we talk about the row context, just think about the current row. And mainly this is determined by which columns are in the table. Perhaps some of those columns are calculated. Perhaps some of them are pulled in with the related function, which is kind of like a VLOOKUP where we're pulling in a number from a related table. All of that becomes part of the row context. So if we're doing a sum on that column, um, we, we could just look at the table and see what's included. So this is probably the easiest uh, easiest of them to understand. The next is the query context. This one deals with what columns really are selected in our pivot table. So if, if we're in Excel and we have a pivot table and we select only one measure and, and two columns from a dimension table, then the query has really limited what's available to our calculation. And we'll need to take that into account. And the final and perhaps most difficult to get your head around is the filter context. This is what rows are left after a filter is applied to all of that. And it's very important to realize that all three of these work together to determine the value that we get from our calculation. And looking at a little bit visually, um, our table in our model may include a set of rows and a set of columns. And our query may begin by including only some of the columns. So we've already limited down what's available for a specific query. And then finally, the filter context is what's kind of happening around that query. So we might have a slicer on the spreadsheet and click on the shirt button in the slicer. And in that case, our query would now be limited to just one of those rows and one of those values. So we, would, we wouldn't get the sum of all of the products anymore. We would just get the shirt. This is, you know, fairly straightforward to understand. We, we start with our rows. We might query them to reduce how big that set is or how wide it is, and then apply a filter to uh, reduce uh, how tall it is, how many rows are in it. And fundamentally, that's what we're talking about with context. However, it can get a little more complex when we're writing calculations. So let's look at a process of how these contexts might be applied to some queries and some calculations that we're, we're doing. So the row context we can think of as, you know, we just have our rows here. And we've added to this uh, basic table a calculated column, the quantity times price, which is just taking 4 times 2 to get 8 and so on. Now, this is fairly straightforward. That, uh, that amount field becomes part of the row context, so it's available for calculations. The next is query context. And the query context, we might select only the amount field and uh, power pivot, for example, would just automatically create a measure for that called sum of amount and add those all up. So with the query context applied, the sum is $111, the addition of all those. The filter context is where we're applying filters on top of all of that. And the filter context can be applied in a couple ways. One is through filters or slicers. The second is within calculations. In this case, we've added to the model a calculation called food amount, which let's kind of walk through the sum x means sum over a table. Filter returns a table, and that table is the, the, the table is sales, but it returns a table that's been filtered by some expression. And in this case, the expression is sales type equals food. So what the calculation basically says is, is go into the sales table, bring back for me a filtered sales table that is only type of food, and then take that table and sum the amount column for every row and return that to a measure called food amount. So we can see that our filter context has been modified by the filter function 
to include only two of those original rows and the addition of those yields a food amount of eleven dollars so this is how uh, you know contacts affect your calculations and it's fairly straightforward where you'll run into trouble is when you didn't anticipate what would happen um, in the environment as your calculation was run so let's look at the same example but with kind of a common um, error or a common scenario that that most people find a, a little bit confusing at first so we'll just run through that again the, the row context is exactly the same we have our, our rows and this is typical your row context isn't really changing that much it's just your base case the query context in this case is the same we're just selecting the sum of amount that's summing up all of those calculated columns and yielding us one value our filter context is applied just as in the previous example the food filter is applied against the table that's summed up we get eleven dollars what if we change the filter context now that we've already gone this far and we add product shirt to the rows within the spreadsheet uh, within our pivot table um, now something's interesting is going to happen and perhaps unexpected the eleven dollars disappears why did that happen well, the reason it happened is because now we're asking for the drill down of shirt the shirt value but we want the food amount sum for the shirt value and what happens in the filter function is it's going to go out and pull in all of the rows that are shirt that also have a product type of food and then add them up and it's added them up into a blank value technically this is the right answer there is no food amount for shirt but our users might not have expected this result they might have really wanted the food amount on the shirt row as maybe some kind of a comparison value and we'll look in the future on, on how we can modify our filter context for example with an all or all except function to return a different value than what the, the filter context usually would these are things you really need to get your head around. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to this. And we'll be talking about these contexts over and over. So it's a very important fundamental first thing to understand before we get moving too much further along.